Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, I wanted to discuss a topic that um, I do know a thing or two about. I want everyone to know that beforehand. Um, just so you know where I'm coming from, I am not someone who is on the outside sort of looking in, someone who's never gotten into video games, which is our topic tonight, and doesn't understand this new form of entertainment. I do. And therefore is condemning it. I'm not. If you are a Christian watching this, we're going to take a look tonight at some biblical principles, see how they apply, see how they correlate with video games. Of course, the Bible doesn't specifically mention video games, but there's plenty of principles there that can give us some insight, some direction as to what our approach, what our demeanor towards video games should be. If you are not a Christian, I would like you to please keep an open mind. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to tell a Christian what to do. I'm not going to tell a non-Christian what to do. But what I am going to do is I'm, I am going to show what the Bible has to say, and I am going to show what science has to say, and we are going to look at the fruits of this video games. And we're also going to take a look at the agenda, if there is one, that is in the video game industry. And you can decide from there what you will do with those facts. Before we begin, we're going to have a word of prayer. But before we do that, I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 12. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual discerneth all things, yet he himself is discerned of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So that's what we're going to do before we start. Spiritual things, are there spiritual aspects to video games? If there are, we will need a spiritual guide in order to get there, in order to understand that. This, this is what we rely, this is why we rely so much upon the Holy Spirit. Even that verse just mentioned that it was the Holy Ghost that is to teach. So Christian or not, let's have a word of prayer and invite the Holy Spirit that we may be able to discern if there are spiritual aspects to this realm of video games. Father in heaven, Lord, we ask that your spirit be here with us tonight. For those watching, Lord, we ask that you would give us the eye salve, Lord, that we could see, that we would be able to discern, that we wouldn't be like the individuals in the Bible that though hearing they hear not and seeing they see not. Help us, Lord to discern if there are spiritual aspects to this, that we would see them as they are. Open up our minds, Lord, to your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So, one of the very first aspects I want to look at is, is what video games have to do with the mind. Okay, because the mind is where... Eternity lies. Where you make a decision for God is right here in the mind. Where you make a decision for Satan or not making a decision, which is by default making a decision, you do it here. It's in the choosing. 
What is this game right here? Does anyone know? Does anyone recognize this? If there was a child here, they would recognize it immediately. This is a game called Fortnite. This is the hot ticket game right now. This is uh, basically a, a game where two teams start and um, they, f they fight against each other. They can gain different weapons. They can get different dance moves, different clothes. This person has a, some type of wings on his, on his costume. You can get different costumes, things like that. And basically, two teams come out and they try to kill each other. That's how it is. But this is, this is, not, a, this is not a new thing. Okay. For me, it was Halo Slayer matches. I used to play Halo Slayer match. It's, it's essentially the same thing. It's just sort of repackaged. There's a few different aspects to them. Call of Duty also. These are, these are very, people use hours and hours of their life uh, playing these games. In fact, the average, the average age of a gamer is about 34, and they're usually male. However, there's a lot of females that are now playing video games also. So it's not just the youngsters, so to speak, that are, do that are doing it. Uh, so let's go into the mark of the beast. It's in the forehead or in the hand. That's where our destiny lies, folks. Is it this? Is it a barcode? Is it a, a chip that goes into your hand? Folks, if only it was that easy. If only it was that easy that all you had to do for salvation to make sure that you didn't receive the mark of the beast was to, to beware of the microchip that they try to insert in your hand or some barcode that they stamp on your forehead. No, no. It goes much deeper than that. We need to look at this, remember, in the spiritual sense. So let's take a look at this, this passage in its spiritual context. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and 10. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the, into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So it's a pretty serious matter. Now, what, what is, what is ha doing something in your forehead or in your hand? It's your, it's your thoughts. That's what's in your forehead, and, and, your, and your hand is your actions. Why is it mentioned the forehead? Why doesn't it mention the back of the head or the side of the head or the top of the head? Why is it mentioned the forehead? Because right behind your forehead is something that's called the crown of the brain. It's, it's your prefrontal cortex. This is basically the CPU of your brain. It's where you make logical decisions. It's, it's essentially where you make a choice for eternity. It's how you learn. It's how you reason, how you socialize with other people, uh, even being empathetic, being able to be empathetic towards other people to understand what they're going through. See, that's a logical thing that goes uh, much further than just the emotional aspect. That is all right here. The, all that is done right here in your prefrontal cortex, okay? So in the hand, in your actions, okay? And notice here, notice the word or, okay? This is how Satan works. He doesn't care how he gets you. You see, you can either believe what you're doing is right, or you can just do it and shut up. Essentially, that's it. That's what it is. So let's take a look at, uh, at what this, this is related to. No, it's, again, it's not, it's not the, the barcode on the head. It's not the chip in the hand. This right here is a nice gesture, but I don't think this is what the Lord meant in these passages. The symbolism is unlocked in Deuteronomy chapter 6, also Deuteronomy chapter 11. If you go through that chapter, it's, um, it's the same symbolism unlocked there. Now, these are the commandments Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1, and then 7 and 8. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down and when thou risest up. And, when thou, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. That is the commandments. 
You will bind the commandments for a sign on your hand, and they shall be as the frontlets between thine eyes. Where is that? Your forehead, right here. Again, the prefrontal cortex, where you make a decision for God. So God wants his commandments in your, your mind. He wants you to understand the commandments, and he also wants you to do them. He doesn't want you to not understand them and just do them or have a bad understanding of them and do them. He wants you to keep his law in spirit and in truth. Now, we can't do that on our own. Okay? I can't do that in my own flesh. I've tried many times and failed miserably. In fact, I don't know why the Lord puts up with me sometimes. But I can keep the commandments. And I am expected to keep the commandments through his power. You see, that's, what, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. That's what we asked for before we got started, the spiritual discernment. We need God's strength, Christ living within us, in order to keep the commandments. All the promises in Revelation are to the one who overcomes. Overcomes what? Sin. So we, we are to keep the commandments in spirit and in truth, essentially. We are to keep the commandments in our forehead, at our prefrontal cortex, and in our right hand or in our actions. Okay, We are to do them and understand them. Again, we have the same symbolism here later on. In Exodus chapter 28, verse 36 through 38, with the mitre for the, for the high priest. Listen to this. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold, engraven upon it like the engravings of a signet. Holiness to the Lord. And thou shalt put it on a blue lace, that it may be upon the mitre. Upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be, and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead. So... Upon our foreheads, upon Aaron's forehead, the high priest, he was to be completely um, dedicated, committed, uh, set apart for the Lord, his mind. You see, that's the great controversy right there. Right here. Holiness to the Lord. This is our most holy place. Okay? If, if our body is a temple, right? The Bible says our body is a temple. Where is your most holy place? It's your mind. It's your mind. So that pl that's where the Shekinah glory dwells. So we need to have the commandments. We need to be completely set apart for holy use, sanctified for God and God alone, right here in our minds. And then it will, it will follow in our actions as well. So again, the forehead. He didn't say put the miter on the side of your head or on the back because it's the prefrontal cortex. That's what's important. That's where we make a decision for God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 through 28, Jesus stated this, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already with her in his heart. Okay? So, so, this is, this is the mind versus the hand. You see, with God, with Satan, it's either or. He doesn't care. You can receive the mark in one or the other. He doesn't care. With God, it's both. You've got to keep the commandments. And you've got to keep them in your mind, too. See, you can't, you can't just not commit adultery. You have to not lust after women, too. And again, how do you do that? Only through Christ. How do, we not, how do we not be covetous towards other people? How do we not be angry towards other people? Maybe when we're on the road or get cut off or something like that. It's only through Christ's strength. It's only through His purification of our lives. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So, right here is your prefrontal cortex. This area here is your limbic system, okay? This is, this is where your amygdala is. This is where your fight or flight response is, okay? This is, uh, there's nothing wrong with this area of your brain. It's where your instincts are, uh, your desire for procreation, um, your desire for food, uh, and fighting. Even anger in and of itself is not bad. If you get angry about seeing sin in the world and you, you hone that and use that to, to, and put it into your evangelism, 
That would, that would be a good way of dealing with anger, right? Even God gets anger, angry sometimes. So this is, this is indwelt. This is placed in us by God. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? Many animals basically make their decisions from this part of the brain. Um, so it's animalistic in nature. But there's nothing wrong with it as long as this is in subjection to this, okay? All of our instincts, eat, if we eat too much, that would be bad, right? So we need to have our, our eating, right? Our, our desire, our fight or flight responses, things like that. Those need to be in subjection to our logic and reason. Otherwise, we end up, you know what we'll end up doing? If we're using this part of our brain, we're going to end up making emotional-based decisions. All right? Decisions that were not thought through, decisions that are not logical, decisions that we have not um, premeditated about, and, and we are just making a, basically an impulsive decision. All right? We don't want to do that. So if this one is in subjection to this one, we have a problem. But if the limbic system, again, nothing wrong with it on its own, as long as it's not, as long as it's not the lead of the brain, and it's in subjection to this. So the war, the war for eternity, it's for the mind. And that's what we're talking about this for video games, because video games is something you do with your mind. You're not really casting spells. You're not really driving a race car. You're not really playing football. Your mind is. You're engaging this form of entertainment with your mind. And I don't want to be hypocritical here. Okay, movies falls into this category too. Okay, movies is the same thing. I'll tell you right now, when you, when you are playing video games, you are engaging this part of your brain. I'll prove that to you in a second. I'll prove that to you in a second. It's not your logic and reason that is thinking about doing the race, or maybe it's a fighting game, Mortal Kombat, or whatever. It's, not, it's all emotion-based fight or flight responses, right? Except you're not actually running away from anything, are you? You're just sitting there. So that's, this is the part of your brain that you are engaging. There's a, there's a set of brain waves that goes with both of these, okay? Beta brain waves are here in your prefrontal cortex. That's when you're, you're sitting up, you're perked up, you're thinking about what I'm saying in, a, in an environment such as this, receiving a lecture, going to school, a job interview, socializing with others. You would have uh, beta brain waves, okay? And that means that your prefrontal cortex is, is the one that is uh, being engaged most, okay? When you are in an alpha brainwave pattern, then you are engaging your limbic system, okay? And if you're engaging your limbic system, then you aren't really thinking logically, you are thinking instinctually, essentially animalistically in a way. It, it, but in and of itself, again, it, it's not bad. If someone's chasing you to murder you, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not deducing all the different things that are going on necessarily. You're just running for your life, right? If you're in war, if you're in combat, people talk about uh, getting sort of uh, combat amnesia where they don't really remember all the things that have happened because they, they're, that's why they train so much because they fall back into their mode of training. I'll give you an example of this. If alpha brainwave patterns, again, on their own, they're not bad. They're not bad. The difference is, are they being is something that you're watching or something that you're playing manipulating your mind into that brainwave pattern or is it happening naturally? That's the question. If, like, for instance, if you drive your car on a route that you've taken many, many times, you're not nervous about it, you're not thinking which way you need to go, sometimes you'll fall into a relaxed state or an alpha brainwave pattern. Have you ever driven home from work and, and forgot that you were how you, you don't have any memory of the drive, you fell into an alpha brainwave pattern. When you watch a movie, have you ever looked up at the clock or played a video game? It's even worse with video games. You ever played a video game and you looked at the clock and it was, say, 2 p.m., and you started playing your video game, and the next time you looked at that clock, maybe four hours, five hours had gone by, where did the time go? Where did the time go? 
you fell into alpha brainwave. Okay? It's just an, it's a natural, it's um, uh, a natural thing that happens when you are engaged with video games or movies, except for it's not happening in a, a natural environment. It's a counterfeit environment, which is forcing that brainwave pattern. Does that sort of make sense? So here they are, the brainwave types. This is what we were just discussing. So again, beta waves are the high frequency waves most commonly found in awake humans. They are channeled during conscious states such as cognitive reasoning, calculation, reading, speaking, or thinking. Thinking is probably pretty important when it comes to an eternal sense, don't you think? Low levels, there can be depression, poor cognitive ability, do we see that in the world today? Lack of attention, do we see that in the world today? So parents need not to scratch their heads as to what is going on. In this video game or movies, it's, it's not the only reason, but it is a part of the reason and the reason why adults who get into video gaming or movies don't seem to have such repercussions as some of the younger ones as the millennials for instance it's because they weren't weaned on them you see my generation was weaned on video games and movies and entertainment so their minds have been hypersensitized at a very young age. Therefore, yes, the poor cognitive ability, it's tenfold. The lack of attention, it's tenfold. However, the optimal range, what we want is consistent focus, strong memory recall, and high problem solving ability. We don't see that. That's what you see in the inc uh, inconsiderateness that's going on on the roads. It's just it's poor cognitive ability, it's lack of attention, and it's centralized focus of self. It's your ability to be empathetic, as stated earlier, is part of your prefrontal cortex function. So you can't think about others when, you, when your brain lacks the capacity to think about others. However, check this out. In alpha waves, the alpha waves are the frequency bridge between our conscious thinking beta and subconscious theta mind. They are known to help you calm down and promote feelings of deeper relaxation and content. However, too much, uh, high levels would be too much daydreaming, an over-relaxed state, or an inability to focus. And this is what we see. It's not just when you're playing the video game or when you're watching the movie that this will happen. If you strengthen that aspect of your mind, you will be an alpha all the time. You see, you can't just turn it off. It's not a light switch. I get that from Lucid, your five brain waves, um, and there is the, the website that you can take a look at that article for yourself if you like. Very interesting article. So again, the war is for the mind, and we're talking about the mind because video games and movies is something you do with your mind. John chapter 4 verse 24 stated this, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. See, you can't, you can't just worship God with the truth, right? That would be something like formalism, ceremony, you know, where just because you keep all the commandments in your hand, right, doesn't mean you're keeping them in your heart or in your mind. All right. So when we worship God, we are to worship Him. And Jesus said God is looking for those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. We need to really worship Him. We need to really want to keep the commandments. We need to really want to do these things and then actually do them also. So we need to have the truth and we need to have the spirit also. Does that make sense? Psalm chapter 101 verse 3 states an amazing principle here especially for Christians. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Guys, if we are about to watch something or play something, and we know that we are going to see wickedness or evil, 
Should we watch it? No. No. Have you ever heard the saying, garbage in, garbage out? Okay, if you are what you eat, your brain is what your brain consumes. Okay? If you consume lectures and books, you will, you will be able to har harness some of, that, some of that intelligence or education that you've received. If you, if you watch things that are just entertainment-based all the time and your prefrontal cortex is being shut off, then you're going to be the sum of that also. Does that sort of make sense? Think about this. This is even in commercials nowadays. I mean, whether you're secular or Christian, you have to admit that there seems to be... What, what is all the fuss and, I guess, obsession with, with provocativeness and drunkenness and all these things? Let me ask you a question. If, if you made a rule in your house where you decided that if you saw someone, on the, you turned on your television and you said, this is a new rule in my house. If I see someone break the law of God on the television, whether it's commercial or the character in the show or movie or whatever, a video game, I'd shut the TV off for two hours. Okay, then you turn it back on. And every time I saw someone make a sexual joke, you'd shut it off for two hours and then you turn it back on. And every time someone would make a joke about Jesus or Christianity or re even religion in general, you'd shut, you'd shut off the TV for two hours. How long would you be watching television? Not very long. I didn't even mention whether, what if people take the Lord's name in vain? What if people you know, do any, any of the sins that are out there? If you would turn it off for two hours, how long would your TV be on? What, four minutes a day, maybe? I mean, that's the reality of it. That's what we see today. It's even, it's in the commercials. You see a, you see a, a beautiful woman who's wearing almost nothing, and she's selling you a car. You know, or, or these, these alcohol commercials, where it's, it shows these, these people, and they have this, this wonderful life. They're flying in jets, they're going, they're traveling all over the world, they have a woman on each arm, right? Just like reality, right, when you drink? No. Many people have lost their families, their homes, their lives from alcohol. I'm someone who knows the darker side of alcohol. And I can tell you it's, it's, it's not the drink, please drink responsibly as they state at the end of those commercials. But again, you know, that's, that's an extreme case there. But Job chapter 31 verse 1 states this, I made a covenant with mine eyes. And the rest of this verse says, Why then should I think upon a maid? So he's using it in relation to sexual sin or lust. However, we can take the principle of making a covenant with our eyes and saying, I am going to guard the avenues towards my heart. Okay? We can't control the things that we see all the time. What you see on the road. What you see passing by certain things. What you see at your work. What you see sometimes in your home. You can't help. But should we try to control the things that we do have some power over, do you think? Absolutely. As much as possible, we should try to control the avenues to our heart. Because it, there is a very real war out there, friends. And this, you've heard it, you've, uh, the Bible talks a lot about the spiritual man and the carnal man. And I'm here to tell you that the one you feed the most is the one who's going to win the fight. Okay? So like if you were to feed your spiritual man or woman, you feed them with the Bible, right? Perhaps sharing the gospel with someone else. Different things like that. Helping people, serving the, the worthy poor. Or you can feed your carnal nature. Let me ask you a question. When you're watching a movie or playing a video game, 
Do you feel ennobled? Do you feel closer to God when you're doing those things? Would you do those things with Christ there? Would you feel ashamed of what you were doing if Christ was there? Because the oxymoron of that, so to speak, is that Christ is there. God is everywhere. He sees all. So you've heard it said before, do the right thing because no one's looking. Well, do the right thing because someone is looking. Now, if I, if I, if I let's say I have both my arms and I need my, my left arm and my right arm are going to go to war. And I, I want, because I want eternal life, I want my left arm to win. But I go to the gym every night and I work out my right arm every single night. And then over here, maybe, maybe once a week, I, I do, do a little something. And then every other night, the right arm. Who's going to win the fight? The one you feed. The one, the one you strengthen. The one you work out. See, this is, this is the reality of the situation for all of us. For any person who has been a Christian for any amount of time, they, they understand that the biggest problem is not, is not Satan out there. It's the person in the mirror. Okay? It's the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, which is what this picture is. We are our own worst enemies. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in order to bring us to the fullness of Christ. We can't do it on our own. So we need to, we need to do the things that are in our power to feed our spiritual nature. And the things that, that we know feed our carnal nature we need to abstain from as much as possible whatever is in our power. So let's take a look at some science here. Video games on the mind. Professor Akio Mori of Nihon University's College of Humanities and Sciences in Japan measured the brain activity in 240 subjects aged between 6 and 29. Mori measured beta waves which indicate activity in the prefrontal lobe. Remember, we've discussed that. And alpha waves, which often appear when the brain is resting. The prefrontal lobe is thought to be the center of emotion and creativity in the brain. And that is um, empathetic emotion, you know, logical intelligence. Mori divided the brain activity of participants into four categories, normal, visual, half video game and full video game. Now, the normal was those who didn't play video games very rarely, okay? Visual was those who watched just movies. That's it. They would watch television and movies, no video games. And then half video game and video game. Now remember, if we want a strong prefrontal cortex, this goes back to the spiritual man and the carnal man, right? If we want a strong prefrontal cortex, we need to exercise it, right? Because the brain is like a muscle in a way. The, side, the, the, the part of your brain that you keep active the most is going to be stronger. Does that make sense? So if you're engaging in your limbic system and it is stronger, it's going to be stronger all the time. Okay? So you had your half video game, so half the time they play video games, and then full video game. Let's take a look and see how it turned out. Normal subjects who rarely played video games were found to have much stronger beta waves than alpha waves. Little change was seen while these subjects did play video games. Isn't that interesting? So, though I'm not necessarily condoning or not condoning uh, playing video games at this time, what this shows was that if you, are, if you have a strong prefrontal cortex because you don't play, let's say, video games or watch movies all the time, which means that this part of your brain, the decision-making part of your brain, the part of your brain that God always talks about, the one he wants to engage with, that part of your brain, if that part of your brain is being exercised and is stronger, then even when they did play video games, the alpha didn't, it didn't, the mind didn't drop into an alpha brainwave pattern. So that just goes to show you that that even when they did do something, because there's, and if we are ever in a situation that is going to try to force us into an alpha brainwave pattern, if we have a strong prefrontal cortex, it will be much harder for it to do that to us. Okay, so does that make sense? 
The half video game group, however, which played video games for one to three hours, three to four days a week, had roughly equal strength beta and alpha waves when not playing video games. So they were about equal when they were not playing video games. But when they did play video games, their beta waves fell below their alpha waves. So when they played games, essentially what happened? Their carnal nature was being engaged. Right? And it's the carnal nature, it's the, the center for instincts, the fight or flight. It's the way most animals think is through their limbic system. Okay? We don't want to be making decisions from our limbic system. Okay? It's good in its place, again, in subjection to the prefrontal cortex. But it's not a place where we want to make decisions from. So it didn't even say what type of video games, did it? It just said video games in general. It, it brought them into an alpha brainwave pattern when they were played half video games. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the video game group, which played video games for two to seven hours daily, showed nearly zero beta activity all the time, even when they were not playing video games. This means there was little to no activity in their prefrontal lobes. These subjects reported being easily angered, having difficulty concentrating, and having trouble socializing. Do we see that in the world today? Maybe you're somebody who struggles with some of this stuff. Well, this is, this is part of the cause of that. Okay? Have you ever spoken to a, a younger person and, and you're trying to talk to them, and they're, they're, they make it awkward, right? It becomes awkward. And then you feel like, is, is there something wrong with me? I, do they not like me, or what's going on? No. It's because socializing is a skill, and it's a skill that takes your prefrontal cortex in order to do. So if you're engaging in your limbic system all the time, you're not going to be able to just do these other things. It's not a light switch. You can't turn it off. Listen to what it stated here. It said that even when they were not playing video games, they had nearly zero beta activity all the time. That's playing for two to seven hours daily. Two to seven hours daily, folks. I used to play a whole lot more than that. Never mind on the weekends. Then it was just a free-for-all. Okay? So they weren't able to turn it off. They were engaging in their carnal nature all the time. Now, video games won't make you, and movies won't make you a murderer, okay? It won't make you a thief. It won't make you, um, you know, take your pick. Any of the, cr the criminal things that we see out in the world today. What it will do is it will offset you in that direction. Does that make sense? So if there's somebody who's on the line, that is on the line, that is a very angry person, and they, they might kill someone. If they play video games, they're increasing their chance of, going, of falling over the edge of that. And the visual group, so this goes for the movies also. Let's not be hypocrites. The visual group comprised of people who largely engage in visual stimulation, such as television, was found to easily develop symptoms similar to the video game group. Geek.com, July 9th, 2002. So, even watching movies, it can have a very similar effect. I think it's sort of comparing beer to liquor, personally. Uh, from my own experience, when I stopped playing video games, I felt a sort of fog remove after I quit, uh, after a few weeks had gone by. And many other gamers who, had st who have stopped playing video games will tell you the same. There's many video gamers who quit playing video games they thought they never could. And they said they wish they never picked up a controller in their lives. Because these are the fruits of them. You, you become more easily angered. You become irritable. Is that, something, is that a good thing for someone who's aspiring to be a Christian? No. Having difficulty concentrating, is that a good thing for someone who's trying to read the Bible? Or does it become boring because you can't concentrate? When a teacher is in a class nowadays and they turn around to show maybe a math problem or something like that, what are all the kids doing when, as soon as that teacher turns around? They're on their phones. They're, they're talking to one another. They're, they're, they have this, their, their mouth open with their eyes sort of glazed over 
because they can't concentrate. It's not that they don't want to necessarily. They can't. It's a skill that you learn. I know, I know somebody who is a young, um, a young man, and he said, oh, I'm, next year I'm going to get straight A's. That's, all, that's what I'm going to do. Big time uh, gamer and just entertainment junkie in general. Okay, the next year came around, got C's and D's. How did that happen? Because it's not a light switch. Jesus said, those who sin become a slave to sin. See, we can't control it because that's the stronger part of your brain. And that part of your brain is going to crave action and in intensity, right? It's not, it's not going to be your prefrontal cortex with logic and reasoning. It's a skill, it's a muscle, if you will, that you need to exercise in order to have. So, in another study, the study carried out by researchers at the University of Montreal revealed that playing shooter games can damage the hippocampus area of the brain, causing it to lose cells. It suggests that this could weaken the brains of young people and put them at greater risk of dementia later in life. Wells and Blackburn, The Telegraph, August 8, 2017. Wow. So it can even damage part of your brain, playing shooter games, something I played a lot of. That was sort of my thing, other than I, I did have um, a love for R RPGs and MMORPGs as well. But for the most part, I like the first person shooter. So w if you allow your children to use these games, or if you yourself are using them, you're, you're, putting, them, you're putting yourself at a greater risk for dementia later in life. Now, what sane person wants that? Okay, you're going to find out real quick if it's a drug or if you're addicted or not in response to that question. If you know something is hurting you, if you know something is destroying aspects of your brain, and you say, well, I don't care if it's destroying my brain or not, that shows you that it's an addiction. Because if I, if I came up to somebody let's say it's it's apples and I said you know there's some a bunch of studies came out apples are no good for you you shouldn't eat apples how hard would it be for you to stop eating apples I mean you might miss apples I know I'd miss apple pie but I'd be able to do it okay it, it's like the alcoholic when you come up to the alcoholic and you tell them that their drink is killing them they say no 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 it's not I can quit anytime I like and that's what you'll hear the very same thing when you speak to video gamers. And you say, Baby, do you think you play too much? No, no, I just like to play. I can quit whenever I want. Well, do you? Interesting. What about time? This is an aspect in the Bible. Look at this girl. She's looking at probably her boyfriend, perhaps her husband. And... What is he doing? He's not paying any attention to her. He's playing video games, right? And we're seeing that. We're seeing there's, there's video game related divorces. We very, there's angry women um, in different aspects of that. I don't really, I didn't really go into that. It's not part of um, this lecture. However, it is worth mentioning that in my own experience, this was the reason I quit playing video games. This was uh, after I became a Christian. I didn't really see a problem with video games for a while, until I started playing them, and I realized that it was hurting my relationship with my wife. Um, let me ask you a question: When you're playing video games, do you want your parents to come home? No. When you're playing video games, do you want your spouse to come home? Not necessarily. Because you don't want them to give you that look, you know, that, <sighs> I wish you were doing something else. You know, I wish you were spending time with me or whatever. Because you, you, want, you want to be in the game. This is game time, right? So that's how the Lord revealed it to me. It wasn't through some of these other things and some of the science that we've just went into. For me, it was, I was playing games and... The Lord sort of stated to me, son, you're wasting your time. Now, 
what good is this person here? And this is a pretty good picture of what it looks like. I'm sure my face looked like this many, 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 many times. Um, you know, you stay up real late. You're tired, but you, but you have to... You have to continue to play the game. You're too invested. You know, you have to get to that next checkpoint or whatever, right? So you give it your time. You give it your money. You give it your resources. And Revelation chapter 5, those, those are forms of worship. It says, uh, worthy is the lamb to receive riches and power and strength and honor. Who do we give our strength to? Who do we give our honor to? That's a, those are forms of worship, folks. So, for me, it was, I was playing video games, and, and how good is this person right here? What good are they for the gospel during these hours of gaming? Not very good. And especially, I mean, even if they're talking to people online, what is what did the conversations usually sound like? Let's be honest. I'm a gamer um, in the past, so I know. It's it's nothing but calling each other names and 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 you know they have the word you know you pwn somebody or someone's a noob, you know you make fun of other people, you do things to their body, their dead body after you you kill them in the game, right? So. <laughs> It's, it's not like an, an uplifting, ennobling thing that you're doing. All right? So, and also, you're wasting your time. The Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 through 17. Wherefore he saith, Awake that thou sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. That's what we're supposed to do, folks. We're supposed to redeem the time. We're supposed to be well stewards of the time that we have because that's really the only thing that we actually know that we have. And even that, we don't really know when our time is up, do we? But we don't know if we're going to have money from any, any moment or any second of any day. Something could happen, right? But we are supposed to, to be stewards of our time. What do we give our time to? Do we give our time? How many hours do we spend watching movies and watching television? And how many hours do we pl spend playing video games? How many hours do we spend listening to music? And how, how many hours do we spend spending time with God? Those are serious questions we should ask ourselves. We're supposed to redeem the time because the days are evil. evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You see, we redeem the time so that we can understand what the will of the Lord is. Is this the will of the Lord, do you think? Whether you're Christian or secular, if you have it, or agnostic, if you have an understanding of, of even the idea of a God, right? He wouldn't want you doing this all the time. And it's not like it's, a, it's, it's just a one-time thing. For most people, even the minor gamers, it's, it's at least a couple hours um, a week, right? So, is an addiction? We need to ask that question. Well, do you have one? These are, these are, some, of the, see, these are some of the indicators from uh, the American Psychological Association on what an addiction is. So, we ask ourselves these questions. Do we have a preoccupation with it? Do you spend a lot of time thinking about games, even when you're not playing, or planning when you could play next? I know I did, many times, especially when there's a new game coming out. Withdraw. Do you feel restless, irritable, moody, angry, anxious, or sad when attempting to cut down or stop gaming, or when you are unable to play? Who has noticed this with either their children or perhaps in themselves, that they've noticed that, Oh man, I just I don't want to be here at this family thing, right? I want to be playing my video game. I don't even want to eat dinner with my family. I just want to play my game. That was me. Okay? Tolerance. Do you feel the need to play for increasing amounts of time, play more exciting games, or use more powerful equipment to get the same amount of excitement you used to get? Well, that's just natural with any with any game. You always the more time you invest, the more things you want to get, you want to be better. And then you sort of feel obligated to the game, don't you? Because you're level 50. Or you, are, you have this certain weapon. You have to play now. You have to play because you're invested in it. You've got something no one else has, so you have to use it. 
I know that was true for me and other people I've met and other people I've talked to. Reduce, stop. Do you feel that you should play less but are unable to cut back on the amount of time you spend playing, playing games? Five, do you give up on other activities? Do you lose interest or reduce participation in other recreational activities due to gaming? Do you continue despite problems? That's a huge one. Are you having marital problems because of your video game or something like that? And in, or maybe with your, just your girlfriend? Or perhaps boyfriend, who knows? Are, are you having problems that are related to your video game and you're saying, I'm not giving up the game. They can walk away, I don't care. Do you see that? that, that that's an indicator that it is an addiction, okay? And so I know there's been, there's been a few studies that compare video gaming uh, with heroin because the pleasure centers of the brain, well, I'm telling you, you, those pleasure centers go off in doing most things that are pleasurable. See, the, the difference is, is it being manipulated or is it happening naturally? Are you, are you walking through the woods and getting some fresh air and you feel a cool breeze and you just, ah, that pleasure center of your brain goes off? Or is it because you just killed your hundredth kill that night? It's a totally different aspect, isn't it? So I'm not saying it's like that, but if you're doing things to your mind that are strengthening your carnal nature, that are giving you that counterfeit achievement, it's not an achievement in real life, that counterfeit achievement and firing off those pleasure centers when it's a counterfeit pleasure, what is that doing to your mind? Is an addiction. Are you continuing despite problems? Do you continue to play games even when though you are unaware of negative consequences, such as not getting enough sleep, being late to school or work, spending too much money, having arguments with others, or neglecting important duties? <coughs> Do you deceive or cover it up? Do you lie to family, friends, or others about how much you game? I know individuals that do that. Or try to keep your family or friends from knowing how much you game. See, this is all, all these things you do with every, every single drug out there. I, you do this with alcohol. Any alcoholic knows that you say, oh, yeah, I, you know, I had, uh, I had like a couple of drinks. I normally don't do that. But the reality is, if you can get away with it, you do as much as you can. OK? It's the same thing. So eight, do you escape adverse moods? Do you game to escape or forget about personal problems or to relieve uncomfortable feelings such as guilt, anxiety, helplessness, or depression? Now that is one of the things that people will use as a defender of video games. Well, it helps us escape. It's, uh, it's my escape. Yeah, so is smoking cigarettes. But what will that do to you? It will kill you. It will kill you. So the stressors that we have in our lives God, God placed those in our mind, things that stress us out, so that we would deal with them, not so that we would escape from them. You see? Nine, do we risk or lose relationships or opportunities? Do you risk or lose significant relationships or job, educational or career opportunities because of gaming? And worse, do you even care when you lose those opportunities? That's a bigger question. Do you even care? That shows you whether or not it's an addiction. You need to take a closer look at that. Uh, that's from Nancy Petrie, uh, 2014, an international consensus for access, uh, assessing internet gaming disorder using the DSM-5 approach. But I'll tell you, these questions are psychology's questions for any addiction. Okay? If you're doing one of these nine, three of these nine things, especially if you're doing more of that, you might have a very serious addiction, obsession on your hands. But it could be anything, whether it's uh, cars, gambling, um, you know, sex addict or, or drug addict, alcoholic, you name it. These are the questions that you ask yourself. So what are some of the fruits? A lot of young, young, young people play this game here, Fortnite. What is this man waiting to do? There's some individuals down here. He's holding a gun. 
he's going to kill them. Okay, this is not, this is, goes way far beyond squirt guns, kids playing with squirt guns. Okay, you actually see the blood. You actually, they look like real people now. What is this doing to your mind to sit there and play a game where all you're doing the entire time is killing? Is there a spirit that is behind the game? This, war is a very serious thing, and I used to play lots of Call of Duty, and I still know individuals that do probably play lots of Call of Duty. In the military, these games fly off the shelf, Call of Duty. Okay. What does it do to your mind to sit there and, and just to, to kill the entire time? You're engaging your alpha brainwave pattern. You're engaging your fight or flight response. Okay, you're not thinking logically. You're thinking emotionally. All right? You're making emotion-based decisions. That's why when someone kills you, you say, oh, mm, probably swear or something. And then you go try to find them to kill them. Right? Oh, I hate campers. Right? Games that force you into a, uh, an aspect where you had to kill. This is from Grand Theft Auto V. This guy's name's Trevor. He... He's the craziest one of the bunch. I used to play this game also. There's aspects of the game where you will start a rampage. And what that, when that happens, all you do is simply kill basically everyone around you. Everyone has uh, um, weapons and things like that. They're shooting at you. You're killing everyone. All right? Dante's Inferno, a story about going to hell and fighting the devil. And when you get to the devil, what does he look like? I mean, when you get to the end, his genitals are hanging out. I mean, these games, they look like the real thing. You see the blood. You see the gore. There's, there's people here. There's a gun. You're holding it. This, this goes so much beyond Pong from like the 1960s. I want to show you a clip here to show you some of the spirit of because people some people will say, well, no, these video games are just secular. It's not a big deal. And I would say, okay. Well then why why are there so many spiritual and Christian like references in some of the games? I'll give you one example. I'll show you a clip. Cain was the first man ever to strike down another. And when the Lord came to him and said, What have you done? Cain could not hide his crime. For the voice of his brother's blood cried out from the very ground. That was the commercial for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, a game that I personally could not wait till it came out. Why would, who did he talk about there? Was that a biblical character that I heard in a secular game? Who was it? Cain. Who was Cain? Cain was the very first murderer on this earth. Other than Adam, if you sort of count the sin thing as being his, his doing, Adam and Eve. But he's the first one to take a life. Notice who wasn't mentioned there. Who did Cain kill? Abel, his brother Abel. Was Abel mentioned? No, because Abel's not the focus. Are we really going to say that, oh, they just said that because it, it sounds cool? Why? Why would they mention Cain as the killer? Because that's the theme of the game. Being, following in the footsteps of Cain. The Bible says, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. All these games live by the sword. You are living through your mind. Because remember, some video games and movies, there's something you do with your mind. You are living these, these other realities, these other lives, and you are living by the sword. Have you ever thought about it like that? Well, let's take a look at some of the fruits Okay? Some of the fruits. And, and yeah, I showed some, some violent things here. But you've got to understand, this is, this is just video games in general. Remember, they, they 
unlock or they, they manipulate the mind into that alpha brainwave pattern. You're not thinking logically. You're not thinking critically. You're training your brain to think emotionally. And we see that in the world today. We see people making emotion-based decisions without any logic or any thought of the future. Take a look at some of these fruits. Daniel Petrick was convicted of murder at the age of 16 in 2007 when he shot both parents in the head, his father surviving, over Halo 3. They took it away from him. In Wellington, Ohio, Peckham, March 2009, PC World, that's a gamer magazine that was talking about that. If you go on, I believe it was, uh, I can't remember the name, uh, I believe it was gamer.com, they have a list of 15 or 20 video game related <laughs> incidents. And some of them are a little loose, but it's on their website. So th they, they know that these things are correlated that are connected to video games. They took away his Halo 3. Is it a drug? Is it an addiction? Do people kill people over drugs? Yes. Do people kill people over video games? Sometimes. Again, this is an extreme case. This is an extreme case. A video, playing a video game won't make you a murderer. All right? But there are many things that you can do in your life that will strengthen your carnal nature and will offset you in that direction. And you have, if you have enough of those things offsetting you in that direction, you might end up in the same boat as this young man. And every Christian knows that deep down, deep down, all of us, all of us, there's no one person better than the other. We are all capable of murder. We are all capable of theft. We are all capable of lying, cheating, stealing, adultery. We are all capable of these things. That's why we need Christ's strength. So I'm not judging these people or saying that they're bad people or saying, that, or saying that they're going to hell. But these are the fruits. These are the fruits of gaming, folks. Zion Shockley. This just happened a couple months ago from ABC News, uh, 13 News, February 26, 2018, this year. Zion Shockley threw, threw, shook, and dropped his infant daughter, causing her death over interfering with his video game. She was, she was crying while he was trying to play the video game and he couldn't concentrate, so he killed her, essentially. Maybe he didn't mean to kill her, that's fine, but he did. Now, when he was shaking her and throwing her, was that a logical decision that he was making or was that an emotional decision? Do you see how dangerous this could be? You see, when you are in a beta brainwave pattern, you t when you take information, you file it away as true or false or in whatever category it goes. For instance, if, I were, if we're all in beta right, as we are right now, if we're in beta and I, and I say something to you like, Satan loves you, most of you would say, well, that's a lie. You wouldn't accept that information. You would take that information, you'd file it under lie. Right? Now, if you were in an alpha brainwave pattern, okay, if you were staring at me and your eyes were sort of glazed over and you, you weren't sort of aware of uh, time, and I said, Satan loves you, do you know what you would do? Nothing. You wouldn't accept the information as true, and you wouldn't accept the information as false. You would simply accept the information. Do you see how dangerous that could be? You just accept the information. You don't file it in, under anything. So now you have this idea that Satan loves you and you haven't filed it. See how dangerous that could be? So it offsets us in the carnal direction. And it's not just violent video games. It's, it's what happens to your brain when you're playing video games, folks. I can't say his last name, but his name is Yang. A 13-year-old Chinese boy, 13, folks, committed suicide in 2004 by jumping from a building, leaving behind a note that stated he wanted to, quote, join the heroes of the game. Fox News, Associated Press, May 12, 2006. Nothing even happened. 
He was just playing World of Warcraft. The game was World of Warcraft, by the way. He was playing World of Warcraft, and he, he wanted that reality so much more than the one that he had that he, he, was, he took his life. He wanted to live in that reality. He was 13. He hadn't even tasted life yet. He could have been anything at that point. Medical doctor, curing cancer. Who knows? We'll never know now. Because he wanted to be part of the game. So these are, and again, this is an extreme case. I'm not saying that everybody who plays video games will commit suicide. That'd be an ignorant statement to make. But again, it offsets you in the carnal direction. Was that a logical decision that he made? Was he thinking about his future? No, that was an emotion spur of the moment impulse. Quote, a 32-year-old man was found dead in an internet cafe in Taiwan after a marathon three-day gaming binge, the island's second death of an online gamer this year, CNN Hunt and NG, January 19th, 2015. And this happens all the time, folks. Somebody will get some days off of work, they'll go to an internet cafe, they'll play their favorite MMORPG, and they'll start do, doing a video game binge Many times there are people that die around other gamers and the other gamers don't even notice that the person next to them is dead for hours, for like eight, ten hours sometimes. This stuff happens every year all the time, ten or more, in different areas, different parts of the world, many in Korea, where people go to these, they go, they go and they start, they start binge playing video games for 36 hours. All right, their, their fight or flight response is going off because they're casting spells and they're trying, to, they're trying to beat out this monster. They're running from the monster or they're shooting something and they're in, you know, they're in the fog of war and everything's going crazy around them and they're, they're playing this championship match or whatever and they're sitting there and the adrenaline cocktail in their body co goes off. The one that happens, you know, like when a murderer is chasing you or when you're in war and you need, to, you need something to help you survive, things that help you run through brick walls, pick up cars, that adrenaline cocktail is released in your body, except for guess what? You're not doing anything. All you're doing is drinking Mountain Dews or whatever, keeping yourself awake, continuing to, to drop that adrenaline cocktail, putting pressure on your heart, your nerves, your body, your nervous system, right, and your mind, the cortisol, the stressor that's being released in your mind, which is acidic to the brain in high doses, you're, re you're constantly releasing that into your mind over the course of this 36 hours. It's no wonder people die, and they die all the time, every year. These numbers are going up, not down. And again, that's an extreme case, folks. That's an extreme case. But just because these are extreme cases doesn't mean you're not on the same road as them. You know, in, with sexual sin, there are many stops on the road to sexual sin. I believe the last one is pedophilia. But perhaps it starts with just sex all the time and pornography, and then it gets into to things, you know, nasty things. And then it goes on and on, and you constantly need to see something new and different and new and different until finally. And it's the same thing with drugs. You might start out just drinking beer, and you might go all the way down, and you're drinking moonshine at the end of it, or, or different drugs. You, you start off with one drug, you end up with some of the much harder drugs that you thought you would never do, like heroin. Just because you're not going to commit suicide or shoot your parents in the head doesn't mean you're not on the same road as them. If you're on the road of anger, right, because these are, these are murders, essentially. One murdered themselves, one murdered themselves by neglect, the other, the other two killed someone else, okay? This is the road of anger. When you pick up your controller and you rage quit, right, and you throw it up against the wall, is that anger or not? It is. So just because you haven't gone all the way down the road, maybe you never will, doesn't mean you're not on the same road. 
Does that make sense? Just a couple months ago, this young man, David Katz, is a 24-year-old gamer from Baltimore, Maryland, was in Jacksonville for the tournament of the GLHF Game Bar in the back of a pizza restaurant. On Sunday, it was a Madden tournament. On Sunday, he brought a gun into the venue and opened fire, killing two people. Then he turned the gun on himself. Levison, Stapleton, and Simon. CNN, Monday, August 27th, 2018 at the mass shooting at the Madden video game tournament. This wasn't a violent video game, folks, per se. But you see, this is the fruit when that aspect of your brain is being engaged all the time. He was offset in the wrong direction. And I don't hate this person. I see this young man, the look in his eyes, and he looks like he's in pain. My heart is broken for this. Because who knows if someone would have told him about Jesus. Who knows what his life could have been like. He, he won the tournament in 2017. He was already the Madden winner. He was the Madden champ, folks. This is him being interviewed in 2017. And he lost in an elimination round, I believe, like the first round. Was that a logical decision he made or an emotion-driven decision that he made? That was an emotion decision that he made. And he killed himself over Madden? Or either way you look at it, maybe he had some other problems too. Okay. But this was the thing, this was the straw that broke the camel's back. You can't argue that. He brought guns to the tournament. As if he was if he lost, he was going to do something. Was he thinking about his future? Was he was he thinking logically? 24 years old, he still has his whole life ahead of him still. It's sad. And those other two individuals, they were professional gamers that he shot, two individuals. So it comes back to the principle, garbage in, garbage out. Listen to this statement. Again, I want you to think about the prefrontal cortex, our reasoning center, where God wants to engage with us, versus our limbic system, which is fine in and of itself, as long as it's in subjection to this. We don't actively find, a way, find ways to engage this that would be bad for our brain, but that's what's happening with the movies and games, folks. That's what's happening. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Where does the Spirit of God dwell in you? In your mind, in your heart, right? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So that goes back to putting no wicked thing before your eyes. So if you're killing someone and it's just a game versus killing someone in real life, you're still doing both with your mind. Does that make sense? If, I'll put it to you this way. If there was a game out there where what you had to do was exhort and steal from the poor, who would, who would play that game as a Christian? No. What, what, if, what if the game was you, you took a, a piece of wood and you, you carved a graven image and you set it up and you began to worship it? Who would buy that game for their kids? Who would play that game as a Christian? You wouldn't play that game. Who would play a game where you waited for people's wives or waited for their husbands to be gone, and then you would go sneak into the house and commit adultery with the wives. Who would play that game as a Christian? You wouldn't play that game. Well then, can I ask you a question? Why do we kill people in video games then? Isn't that one of the commandments too? Isn't that one of the commandments too? You see, it, it, sort of, it sort of makes more sense when you think about it like that, doesn't it? So if we're setting wicked things before our mind, if we're feeding our mind essentially with garbage and strengthening the carnal nature, 
God says that you're messing with the temple of God. And these are harsh words. These are harsh words. But this is what it says. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are ye? The only things that we should allow into our hearts, into our minds to consume are things that ennoble us and bring us closer to Christ. Again, I want to ask you, if you were watching this movie or playing this game, if you wouldn't do it with Christ, then you shouldn't do it. Right? Would you feel ashamed if he was there? Would you, would you make an excuse for it, perhaps? Of course, that wouldn't be a good idea because he already knows. So garbage in, garbage out. We know this is true. We know this is true with, with our physical aspect. If we eat bad food, we aren't going to be healthy. Go ahead. I mean, what's that documentary, Super Size Me? He ate McDonald's every day, and he was, the doctors wanted to call him off of it because he was going to kill himself. Okay? If we feed ourselves mental McDonald's, we are going to destroy our brains. Does that make sense? And it's not just the violent video games. It's video games in general that are, that are putting you into that alpha brainwave pattern. It's all the junk food, folks. You know, the word muse means to think. Okay? And if you put, if you put an A in front of it, it becomes the word amuse. And when you put an A in front of it, it means the exact opposite. I'll give you another example. Moral versus amoral. So amuse truly means to not think. So what are we doing to amuse ourselves? That's what's going on when you're playing. That's literally what is going on when you are playing a video game or watching a movie. You are amusing yourself. You are not thinking. We need to be thinking. We need to have this part of our brain strong so we can make a decision. So, again, we have the spectrum of anger. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, essentially, the... It, it can be the opposite. When we, when we behold the Lord, when we read the Word of God, when we, when we become closer with God, when we spend time with God, we, we become changed into His image. Isn't that beautiful? But the opposite is true also. If we spend time with the devil, we become changed into His image. So if you are, if you are watching things that are evil, in nature, people stealing, people cheating on each other, people gossiping about each other. By beholding those things, you are changed into the same image. Garbage in, garbage out. Just another way of saying it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8 puts it this way. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So, when we are focusing on carnal things, when we are manipulating our mind into a carnal mode of thinking, we are sowing to our flesh. Literally, we are feeding the carnal nature of ourselves. And if we feed that carnal nature, he will win the fight, or she. So, is there an agenda? Again, I want, to think, I, want, I want to put out the principle. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes from Psalm 101, verse 3. This is a kid's game. This is Raymond Origins. In this part, I'm going to show you a clip a little later. In this part of the game, the, these guys go up along with Raymond. He's somewhere back here. And they go up before this thing. And I, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a triangle here. And these are, these are, these are eyes, eyeballs. So you have the symbolism there. And what you do is you go and you bow down and, and basically worship this door until it opens. This is a kid's game. So is there an agenda? Someone designed it this way, knowing probably that most parents wouldn't play and wouldn't know. This is a game for kids where they're worshiping something other than God. I want to put out another principle. Romans chapter 1, verse 28 through 32, it states this, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, 
God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You see, when we, were, when we reject God, he'll give us over to that carnal side of our mind, the limbic system, the amygdala, to do those things which are not convenient. I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there, and I don't want to talk about the gamer or the movie watcher, per se. I want to talk about the characters in the games or the characters in the movies. Are your characters that you are playing as, are they filled with all unrighteousness? Are they fornicators? Like say Duke Nukem or some of these other guys? Any one of the characters from Grand Theft Auto? Are they wicked? Are they covetous? Are they malicious? Are they full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers? Are they backbiters? Are they haters of God as Riddick is? from the Chronicles of Riddick? Are they despiteful? Are they proud? Most games, it's not worth playing as the character unless they're proud and boasters. You want to be the cool guy, the one you know with the sunglasses on or whatever. You want to be the cool guy. So the, are, are your characters in, the, in your movies and in your games, are they proud? Are they boasters? Are they inventors of evil things? I know in the game Borderlands, there's individuals in that game that come out with different ways of killing people with different guns and weapon systems, and they're like, they're crazy. You know, in the game, there's a lot of crazy people in that game. Are they inventors of evil things? Are you taking pleasure in that? Are they disobedient to parents? Are they without understanding? Are they covenant breakers? Are they without natural affection? Do they, are they, or are they cold? You know, then... They have to be a cold killer. Right? Are they implacable? Are they unmerciful? Now I want to talk about the gamer or the movie watcher again. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Are you taking pleasure? Are you using your free time are you taking pleasure? Are you loving? Are you being amused by those that commit sin? So I won't do it, no. But I'll watch this TV show where they gossip about each other or where they kill each other. I, I, you know, I, I won't do it myself, but do you have pleasure in your video game characters that have sex with multiple partners or that kill other people and things like that. Do you have pleasure in them that do that? Do you seek out those things? Are you trying to live vicariously through the video game character as did uh, the young 13 year old from China? This game, who is this game geared towards? With all the colors you can tell not to mention it's Game Boy Advance. Children. What does the Bible say about sorcery? This game's called Witch. Completely condemns it. This, this is talking about what we were just talking about. The pleasure, seeking pleasure in them that do. With these people, yes, they're kids. This is how Satan packages things, folks. Puts a bow on it. With these kids, after they grow up, so, so to speak, and they continue to be witches and sorcerers, would they go to heaven? No. No, they wouldn't. So why do we play as video games where we pretend to be them? Okay? So it, it, it could be packaged like this, or it could be packaged like this. You see these graphics? This looks basically like a real woman. She's a mage. She's from Diablo. Saints Row, the violence. In this game, Bioshock Infinite, which I'm going to show you a clip of, a uh, uh, large section of the clip is, is this game. You go around killing the religious people of the game who are obviously metaphoric of Christians. This game, Skyrim, I used to play this game a lot. I clocked in many, many hours on that game, especially when I was still in the Marines. It's all about death. It's all about magic. It's all about killing. You're one of the dragonborn. Who's the dragon in the Bible? Satan is the dragon in the Bible. Yes, you, you kill some dragons, but others you team up with. Um, it depends. 
You're, you're a dark magic magician. You, you can raise the dead. There's all sorts of things you can do in that game. But mo you don't really go around doing good things in these games. That's my point. Far Cry 3. This was a game I played a lot of. I could put any of the Far Cries up here. But I put Far Cry 3 because I played this one from start to finish. You start off as basically a college student. You get uh, marooned onto this island. This individual kidnaps you and your friends and begins to torture you guys and kill some of your friends off. You escape, and that's how the, game's, that's how the game begins. And from there on, you have to figure out how to survive, so you essentially pick up weapons and start killing people, and that's how you survive. Now, the, in the game, the individual starts off as a, basically a scared college student. By the end of the game, you can even hear in the game, while you're killing people, the character laughing or saying, oh, that's awesome. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no way that you can control that. That's just what he does. Okay, I played that myself, I know. This game, Halo. Who is this group this confederacy of aliens here. What are they called? They're called the Covenant. Now, in a Christian context, what is the Covenant? The Covenant is our only hope. It's the Covenant of God. That's our only chance for survival. And in the game, the Covenant is the enemy. Is that just a coincidence? Are all of these just a coincidence? Is it just a coincidence that you play in a game as Diablo, you can play as the devil. Is it, is it a coincidence that you play a game and you're doing witchcraft in all these games and you go around killing people as you please and you go around killing the Christian-like characters of the game? Is all of that a coincidence? You see, any one of these things on its own is, is essentially falls on its face. It's essentially worthless. But all of these put together becomes much more than just circumstance. Grand Theft Auto V, game I played a lot of. It really looks like Southern California. I lived out there. There's even a military base in the desert, which was where I was at. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. You know, war is a very serious, nasty, nasty business. Men have come back. They used to call it shell shock. Now they call it PTSD. You know, it does something to you when you're trained to kill someone over and over again throughout for years you know depending on whether you just do four years or five years like I did in the Marine Corps infantry or whether you do 20 years who knows how bad it could be then and the different things that these individuals go through over there I know I know I've known friends friends of friends and I, I'm not judging anybody because I played these games even after knowing this Okay? But why would you replicate that? It's an awful business. And it's destroyed so many people's lives. I know individuals that have come back. They, they survived. They made it. They came back from Iraq. And you know what they did? They hung themselves. Because they couldn't make the voices stop. And they didn't know where to turn. And I know how that feels. Not the voices aspect, but more related to alcoholism, but it's just, it's scary, isn't it? It's why the video, we are so obsessed with war and death, aren't we? All the movies are apocalypse movies. All of it's like destruction of almost the entire world. So many people die in all these movies. You know, the Bible says that those who hate God love death. Is that what we're seeing? That's what we're seeing. This, this young man, he was, I believe he was 16 years old. His name was Devin Moore. He was arrested for uh, stealing a vehicle. And then he tried to take the officer's gun. He jumped him, took his gun, and shot someone in the head. I believe it might have been the same officer. He was quoted stating this, life's a video game. We all got to die sometime. His game of choice was Grand Theft Auto. I don't know if it was San Andreas or if it was 
Vice City or if it was five or four, it doesn't really matter. This is, again, another extreme case. I want to mention that. But these are the fruits, nonetheless. These are the fruits directly re related. So now I want to play you another clip. This one's sort of a long clip um, that talks about some of the symbolism in video games. Hey guys, it's Jared. I'm going to start off Assassin's Creed, Mega Blockbuster video game franchise. There's a constant theme of Illuminati, Luciferian, and Satanic symbolism throughout games. Desmond walks up into an eagle eye, see writing all over the wall with what appears to be a demon head as well. And as you progress further in the room, you'll see all over the room is Illuminati and Satanic references ever. This symbol I found really interesting. Here, I mean, you got the Illuminati period and the sun worship, but the reference to the forbidden fruit and the tree of knowledge of good and evil really ties it in and shows their true colors. The Illuminati are Luciferians, satanically inspired, to bring about the one world government talked about in Revelation. And all throughout this game, you're looking at their symbolism. You're worshiping their symbolism. But it's not just the symbolism we have to worry about. If we really think about it, these games are starting to take on themes. Building better worlds. It's got the pyramids all inside the W. That's a New World Order reference. Right here at the beginning of this Aliens vs. Predator game, the Predators have the same symbolism that the Mayans and the Aztecs used for the sun, and constructed in the same exact type of pyramids that they used for sacrificing of children to demonic gods. Here it looks like the gates of hell with two Predators standing guard. And then an illumination happens once the unlocking occurs, and a great light shoots out of the pyramid and illuminates the top of it. You guys, this is not a video to condemn or judge anyone for playing games. I was a video gamer. I spent hours a day playing video games. But there's a point where we got to be honest with ourselves. And like, look at this aiming reticle, man. All throughout this game, you were forced to stare at this pyramid, this red pyramid juggling around your fate. We're just going to stay ignorant and say, oh, no, they're not trying to push any symbolism at us. Look, he just killed a guy and threw up his hands. What did he do? Oh, that was for the jump. No, look at the way he threw up his hands in the same pyramid that all of Hollywood is using. The same pyramid symbolism. The same throwing up the hands in praise, worshipping the pyramid, worshipping the Illuminati Luciferian pyramid. And now you have to do it with your avatar. Video games are being used as an influential tool to prepare the hearts of man for the Antichrist system, and no game is this more apparent than Bioshock Infinite. In this game, you have the mark of the false shepherd on your right hand, and you go around killing the religious people who are a clear caricature of Christians. And what you'll see in this walkthrough right here is that people are taking joy in it. I hope that this video will be a revelation to a lot of people of what is going on in these video games right now and how they are using them to prepare men to accept the beast. Showing all the crap. Hallelujah. What the? Why would he send his savior unto us if we will not raise a finger for our own salvation? And though we deserve not his mercy, he has led us to this new Eden. And the prophet shall lead the people to the new Eden. And the giving of thanks and by submerging ourselves in the spirit. Look at these weirdos. Tailed against the sudden beneath us, it. Is it someone new? Someone from the sudden below? Newly come to Columbia? I just need passage into the city. Passage to the city? Brother, the only way to Columbia is through rebirth in the sweet waters of baptism. Will you be cleansed, brother? Hey, I'm just looking to pass through. What? Must I? Time to this or turn around and get back on that rocket. <laughs> hey, I baptize you in the name of our prophet, in the name of our founders, and the name of our Lord. That's messed up. 
They're looking at the founding fathers. And so each year we recommit ourselves to our founders. And, and recommit to, to our, our prophet, prophet Father, Father Comstock. Comstock. So that we Our prophet fills our lungs with water, so they may better love the air. Another one of these. Beware of the false shepherd. Seeks only to lead our lamb astray. Who is the false shepherd? Only our vigilance protects the lamb from the false shepherd. What the hell are they talking about? I want to point this out real quick. Your avatar looks at his hand and sees that he has the mark of the false shepherd. And I want you to look at this billboard. You will know the false shepherd by his mark. You see the mark is AD, but as you see the hand is arranged in the AOK -okay sign where the index finger and the thumb finger are coming together and the three other fingers are off to the side. Now, this is the symbol that Hollywood's been using for years to subconsciously get the masses ready to accept the mark of the beast. If you ever see this sign or someone throwing it up, be wary because it is not of Christ, it is of Annie. Christ. He's got the false mark. So he's the false shepherd. Wow. Later on in the game, we see who's behind this manipulation tool that's so violent they love it. It's the Illuminati, and I hate calling them that. Really, they're the Luciferians, and it really gives an accurate description of the evil we're dealing with. No Bioshock Infinite's a drastic case, but I want you guys to realize this symbolism is in all video games. These influences are in all video games. This is the symbol for Link right here, and this is the symbol for the Knights Templar. It's the same exact thing, guys. The pyramid, the all-seeing eye right here. You have a little illuminated creature flying above Link. It says this statue with one eye's gaze pierces into your mind. Phew, the, the illumination's there. He's fighting a demonic creature with the illuminated all-seeing eye pyramid. All-seeing eyes everywhere. The Highland Family Crest is symbolized sun worship and Baphomet worship. Right there. It's Satan, guys. It's Satan. Right here, one of the tasks for the game, you take gems and lay them before an altar for the sun in a temple. And when you finish this task, the pyramid gets illuminated. Guys, how much clearer do they have to make it until you're going to realize that this is the world. This is the world. Here's Skyrim. This is a game that, that, that takes hours of people's lives. Hours of it. This is their second life. What does it have? Upside down pentagrams with uh, eyeballs in them. Upside down pentagram with an eyeball in it. They have temples with upside down pentagrams and eyes in them, man. What does this look like to you? This looks satanic. Look at it. It's satanic, man. Right here, the Skyrim character with the darkened right eye, the evil right eye. Hollywood is using this same symbol all the time. It is the symbol of the beast. It is the symbol of the beast. They are subliminally getting us ready with all the things that we like to like the beast. That is what they are doing. These are the foot soldiers of Satan seeking to push God out. And these games are a part of it. That's what we need to see. They are all pushing the same satanic themes right here the Bible strictly forbids against witchcraft which you'll see this game is laden with occultic arts and and demonic worship this man is resurrected not by the power of Christ but by dark magic and we've been desensitized so much by these things it doesn't even phase us this is one of the gods in the game Julianos you go to her temple and you worship there to get skill points her symbol is a pyramid with with the rays of the sun coming off it this is one of the pyramids from her temple and as you can see when you highlight the lines it has the same symbolism that the Freemasons use guys we need to wake up we need to see this new world order plot and how they are using the things that we like against us Look at this. For your skill points, you have to use astrology. You have to use anything but but things of Christ. That's what it's all about, guys. 
anything you want. That's what the Satanists believe. Do as thou wilt. Do as you want. So Lucifer the light bearer brought them their knowledge, and now they're passing it on. They're trying to fulfill the mission that he has laid out before them. This whole game, the Bible strictly forbids against witchcraft. He's in the Bible also says, if you kill your brother in your heart, then it's the same as doing it. So if we're practicing witchcraft in our heart, oh man, I'm a mage, yeah. Then that's what we're doing. The satanic imagery is here, and we are dark magicians now, because we play this game. God sees it as all the same. He knows our hearts, guys. This is satanic. This is the beast system. How much more clear do they have to make it before it doesn't sit well with us? Love not the world or the things of the world. For if you love the world, the love of the Father is not with you. You won't find buildings with Christ painted that big on it. Even in kid games, you see the eye symbolism. In the game, you have to run up and bow down before eyes that are right below a pyramid with an illuminated top. This is worship, guys. These people are slaves. They are getting you ready to worship the beast even with kid games. Guys, I'm not condemning anyone for playing these games. I was a gamer, and I know I didn't put Halo in here. I was an avid player of Halo. Call of Duty, the first-person shooters were my thing. The symbolism's all over it. In Halo, you're killing the Covenant. The people of Christ keep the Covenant of God. The, 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 the elites, the prophets, the seers, it's all... Christian references, guys, and you gotta run around and kill the, the 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 covenant, man. Let's let's get our heads out of the sand. Let's stop just trying to justify it because we love it. If we love it, then it's probably our flesh that loves it. Every second on earth is a gift from God. God has always made it clear. His desire is that we be good stewards of the gifts and blessings He gives. How can we be considered? good stewards if we spend our lives looking at satanic imagery and symbolism in all of these games guys we have to be real if we are going to serve christ the great commission was once we are saved to bring others to christ not to sit around and look at satan's arts that, that's why i love the analogy of the bridegroom christ is the groom and we are the bride if a bride is running around cheating on the groom with his enemy every single night until the wedding day when, when she comes to the wedding day she'll get to the altar and he'll be like dude get away from me I don't want you you've been cheating on me with my enemy that's how it's gonna be when we die and stand before Christ he's gonna be what did you do with the life I gave you what, what, what did you do with the work that I set before you? What did you do? You would be like, well, I mean, we were looking at Satan's pictures all the time and stuff just to pass the time because we were bored. We were hanging out with Satan. I mean, he was there. He, he kept me entertained, you know, and, uh, but I, I told people that I was a Christian. I, you know what I mean? <laughs> Guys, it doesn't work like that. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we'll know. That's why I had to give up video games. And it was, it was a hard thing for my flesh to do, but God made it so easy. And I'm telling you guys, if you look at the amount of symbolism and the things that they are doing right now, you'll realize how short it is like I did. It's time that we step up and be the men of God we were meant to be, not the little boys of the world. It's time, guys. They're brainwashing us. That's what they're doing, distracting us from what they are setting up around us. And I will not be a part of this satanic system any longer. Dive into the scriptures. Read the word. That's where the truth is. So, pretty interesting video. And again, this is not somebody who doesn't understand gaming, who has not given themselves over to gaming, who has not been a partaker of gaming. This is an individual that has given their life to Christ, and Christ revealed the problem. You see, because a gamer doesn't want to give up their games. He even said at the end of that video, he didn't want it. It was one of the hardest things he ever did, but Christ made it easy for him. That's how you know the Spirit of God is working in somebody. This is not something that uh, is just, just some psychological problem people have. Christianity is very real. 
And when the Holy Spirit is working on your heart, he will reveal things to you. As we asked in the beginning of this, this lecture for the discernment of the Holy Spirit, that he would help us to see, I hope that you are able to see some of the issues and some of the agenda with the game. And I'm telling you, you see the very same things in Hollywood. He even pointed some of that, those things out. So if we know, if, if you go to a well for water and you know the water source is polluted, would you continue to go to that well? No. So why do we keep going to Hollywood? Why do we keep going to the video game industry and trying to receive some type of spiritual food? Because that's what it is. It's spiritual food or spiritual water, however you want to look at it to continue the well um, object lesson. And again, uh, one of the things he mentioned was in Halo, you're killing the covenant. In those games, you have a, a hierarchy in, in the aspect of the aliens, the covenant, they have prophets, they have seers, they have all these, they're all Christian references, as he stated. And again, in any one of these things on their own falls flat on its face. But all of them together really shows you that there is something very strange going on. Whether you're a Christian, or even if you're not a Christian, you have to admit, something is very strange is going on in these video games. Why are all the things that the Bible speaks out against the things that are glorified? Why is it that all the pagan and heathen religions are shown in their full majesty and full glory, such as games like God of War? Here, it teaches rebellion. There's this rebellious spirit. I know individuals, they love this game. I, I used to uh, love, I remember playing parts of it myself. I have individuals who love this game that I know personally. But would Drake, this is the game, um, Drake's, I believe it's uh, the third or fourth one, but uh, it's a game Uncharted, and this, this individual's name is Drake. He goes around and he's, he's essentially an archaeological thief. Okay, he's a thief. All right, but he ends up into a, into a premise where he sort of kind of can help save the world, right? Well, what, right, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and wicked with, with good things? Can two walk together except they be agreed? This is what Satan does. He mixes the good with the bad. He, get, he has a character that, that is very charismatic that you like, and he'll do bad things. Does Drake kill people? Yes. Does Drake even ever talk about God at all? Yes or no? Would he, would he be going to heaven? Is he one of the saints? Is he, is he, is he more, related, more like Cain or more like Abel? More like Cain. God of War. I loved that game. I absolutely loved that game. I played all of them as far as I could. I don't know if they've come out with more. I'm sure they have. Oh, yeah, they, just, they did just come out with one where it's him and his son. I haven't played that one. But I played all the other ones, and you're fighting against the hierarchy. It's all about rebellion and, and anger and violence. This guy killed his own kids. You play as him. Yes, it's a curse, that is, and he did it by accident. But he was serving the God of War. How many people in real life have died um, because of the God of War? Mithra? God of War. Ares, God of War. Mars, God of War. These are the gods from the old days, from the old pantheon, and the Greeks, and Romans, and Persians. How many people have actually really died in real life in these gods' names? Should they be glorified? What about doing chainsaw battles in these games like Gears of War? Again, would you play a video game about adultery or theft or carving a graven image? Then why do we play video games about witchcraft and about killing people? Isn't that one of the commandments also? So how are you going to spend your time? You know, there are some wonderful, wonderful things you can do with this life that God has given you. You can take it, for instance, and you can find out who you really are. You see, in a video game, there's no real growth. Yes, you grow in the game, but in rea reality, you don't really learn much about yourself. See, God wants you to learn 
about who you really are so that you can find your place in his will. So are we going to spend our time in a fake, counterfeit reality, fighting against counterfeit individuals, spending our time engaging our limbic system of our mind, and killing individuals in a game, or are we going to spend our time using our beta waves, our prefrontal cortex, socializing, sharing with another the words of life? Because again, a video game or a movie won't make you a murderer. At worst, it will. At best, it will make you less intelligent. Who wants to be less intelligent? No one. Matthew chapter 6, verse 23, we'll close with these couple of verses here. If thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. The things that we consume with our eyes, folks. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? On the other hand, we have this, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Again, redeeming the time. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your discernment. We thank you for your wisdom and your guidance. We thank you that we can discern the spiritual aspects of things when we seek you, Lord. Lord, I pray that any individual watching this, whether Christian, secular, agnostic, atheist, Lord, that, that your spirit would be there with them to help them see the agenda of the video game industry, the fruits of video games in and of themselves, and that your principles are true and correct, Lord. Please continue to abide with us. In Jesus' name, amen.